In Blanco, Cheryl Smith Rogers and James Hearn are wild about native plants. Their certified backyard habitat harbors peaceful retreats for them and countless species of wildlife. In her blog, Windows on a Texas Wildscape, Cheryl documents how she reduced lawn and dangerous invasives for native plant diversity. In 2012, Texas Parks and Wildlife designated them a wildlife habitat demonstration site. The original owners had already rocked in that area around the big live oaks in the front. And then after we got married in 06, and then I think about a year later, we really started working on the yard just with the idea of trying to work on it. And the rocks were available because we don't, we don't have the, the money or really the want to, to, to hire someone to come in. So everything you see is what we have done. He's hauled rocks and you know, made the beds and we've gotten mulch from our local electric cooperative. There was times where we thought we need a master plan. We need to sit down and, and do a master oh, yeah. plan. We tried. I'm like, it's not going to work. Because <laughs> we, it, when it happens, it happens. Yeah. And I mean, the day before, we, we won't even be thinking about uh, making a new garden. All of a sudden, the next day, hey, let's do a garden. And once we decide we're going to do one, it's done. But it's just been trial and error. Cheryl grows her collection at native plant sales along with seeds, transplants, and divisions from around her property. I love the plants. You know, I really love what they do and how they benefit the insects and the birds. I know we have a lot more wildlife. Under rock-bordered live oak trees, she clusters shade lovers in dense colonies. In the garden and the meadow, she cultivates several species of milkweeds, including Texas milkweed, an antelope horns milkweed. Charming pearl milkweed vine raises the bar. On one trellis, fragrant night blooming Berlandier's trumpets attract pollinating moths. We have plant species that, that flower at different times of the year. Providing food and habitat in all seasons keep wildlife around during all life cycles. Nooks and crannies make comfy homes. Larval plants prompted a black swallowtail to raise another generation. Water is a big draw, so they offer lots of options. James collected low bowls for ground creatures. They were cleaning brush and they found these, I don't know if they're matatis, or, but they are grinding, grinding stones of, of some sort. Their plants are pretty self-sufficient though, giving hose water only to establish new ones or help out when things are really hot and dry. Patio landing spots make for restful observation points. We just want areas where, you know, we could go or people could go and just sit and, you know, watch the hummingbirds and and just kind of escape. And then we had the bricks that had come from my grandparents in San Marcos and were historic. And so James made a little nook back in the corner of the yard. He made another patio with uh, a fire pit and furniture that we got off Craigslist. It was the bright colors and everything, just the right setup, so we were real lucky. Ever clever, when James found a pulley from an ancient well east of Blanco, he fabricated a replica. In 2008, they bought the vacant lot next door to create the meadow. It was a vacant lot that the own, original owners of this property owned, and so when it became available, we purchased it. And um, we didn't really have the idea in the beginning of turning it into a meadow, but it just kind of started happening. I guess it was a year or two ago that I did write a letter to the um, City Hall and asked him, requested not to mow along the easement and um, because I told him there was a lot of special native species in that easement and that we would maintain it. And I also told him the reasons why, you know, because of the native uh, insects that, that might, you know, host and nectar along even the easement there. But then I asked James, I said, can we put a sign up that says the meadow because that way people that live in this neighborhood will know that it's not just a vacant lot. 
that there is a purpose there. And, and so I went and looked at the park signs, you know, in the state park, because they have a very specific style of sign. I <laughs> wasn't too keen in, on the middle part, only, only because I liked it kind of like a golf course. And so after a year or two, she finally convinced me to just let it go wild. And that's what we did. And here, then there's a the meadow. And I'm glad I listened to her. And it's just been amazing, beautiful. We didn't really even per se go out there and plant because a lot of the species were already there. And so what we did was encourage. The seeds that were already growing there, I took, you know, pulled and then just threw them and to try and encourage what was already there. Really, we haven't planted anything. When everything dies out, then it'll take the lawnmower and I'll mow. And what that does, it shoots the seeds out that are already on the plant and spreads them even further. A writer and a Texas master naturalist, Cheryl brings hands-on nature insights into her freelance publications. Through them, her blog, and the garden itself, she and James are valuable wildlife ambassadors to keep our sights on the future.